decided to put split pins um, in the sides to hold the fabric and also hold the handles. So what I've done, I've already done the other three sides and now I'm working on this edge. So what I've done is I've measured where I want them, which is if you make one, that'll be decided by you. Obviously on the sides, I included the handles. As you can see, you can see the split pins in the handles, hopefully. Just there. So I've also added another because I still want to keep the fabric taut over the sides. So I've used this, which is a screwdriver, um, a screw. Uh, it's like a brad awl, but it's a, like a screw brad awl because I couldn't find the brad awl, but this is just as good. So I've marked with a tape measure and my tailor's chalk. Uh, where I want it to be and I want it to be two inches down because I'm obviously I'm gonna That's that was governed by where the handles went two inches down and on the ends I've done um, let's just Have a quick look Two and a half inches in Obviously we put in three at the sides then I had to divide that into three keeping in mind that where I wanted my handles um, Help to dictate that bit so then I've made a chalk hole and I've as you can see I've made a hole in this one and then you hold keep the fabric taut when you put when I've put it through and um, gone all the way through I don't know if you can see that there it is sticking out so now then I can put the split pin in So, put the split pin in. Have to making sure you catch the fabric. And then make sure it's been pushed as far as it can go. And then press down. Obviously then, these are what I'm using to obviously keep the fabric taut, but not too tight. The other thing I wish to tell you is that from the last time I did I undone my sides when I put this bug because I said I weren't happy with it and allow so if you've got an 8 inch square that you're taking your fabric out of make sure that you're doing seven and a half inch square to leave half an inch a quarter of an inch each side I only when I'd finished I only allowed a quarter that was an eighth an inch seam allowance if you take half an inch out making it seven and a half inch square then obviously you've got a quarter of an inch and I did that and it actually fitted better so that's the other tip for that so on this what we do is pick the point to where we want it and then just screw the hole and then obviously when you get to the other side You've got to keep the fabric taut. It's only through cardboard and a bit of fabric and wadding, so it only takes a few seconds. So, keep the fabric taut. And then you should see it pop out the other side. It must be a bit thick I would in there, but just keep going, keep pushing the fabric on top of it and then you should make a hole. There you go, so that's the hole that's made there. And you should be able to then push your pin through. Push your split thin pin through this side like so and then you should be able to push your fabric you should be through the cardboard through the other side we what in needs to be pushed out of the way I think
again if you're not sure just get your brad all again and just go through again just making it a little tiny bit bigger to make your life easier there you go and then you should be able to push your pin through there you go and it comes through the other side push as hard as you can and then split it Bit, bit tough this is the uh, I think it's the wadding that's getting in the way that's probably just an extra bit of thick wadding where I've dubbed it over I'll try again you should be able to just split it with your fingers and then press down I'm using this to press it open and flat There you go, and I've got three, two, three, and two in it. Looks padded because you've got wood in on it. it. Looks like it's been quilted. So that's the first step. Don't forget that my mistake was only allowing a quarter of an inch on the fabric when I was cutting out the squares to sew together to fit it on here. Uh, it must be half an inch and then also I've used split pins so called because they split like so and then that secures the handles so the next step is to put the wad in and the inside fabric right the next bit is to put the wood in on the inside so I've measured it uh, it'll be thinner it'll be um, not so wide and long on the end as what is the outer because of the cardboard thickness and also you've got the um, um, wood in as well to contend with so and place your button don't worry about the spray being because uh, you're going to want to stick the next size and then just make sure that you tuck it under the edges it's very sticky I really do like this glue it'd be great for when you're doing the backing of a quilt it'll never move so anyway you stuck that down it's a bit sticky all over your fingernails <laughs> and uh, that's the, the next step so the next step now after that is to do the fabric i'll have to measure that one out and work that one out well this is where we are at the moment this is as far as we have got and that's securing the fabric to the side using split pins now we're going to do the fabric and also securing the handles at the same time now we're going to do the fabric for the inside so this is the formula for doing the inside fabric and again the sides are five inches each the bottom width ways is eight inches and then we're going to overlap it on the inside where we're going to hand sew by an inch each side down that way it's 12 inches again both ends are five inches and then overlap at the top two ends by an inch both times so that's 12 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 equals 24 and then you've got 8 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 equals 20 so the fabric I'm using at the moment is a canvas one that I used on a bag and uh, it's pale very 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 pale green that to match the outside uh, hopefully I've got enough and that'll be 24 by 20 so we're using the same method as we did before. 
if we've got five at one side plus the inch turnover makes six so we need to make these five and a half these corners so as you can see i've measured all the corners and now i need to cut them off and just to be on the safe side if you put this in the center you'll see that it should fit with a little bit of a gap because you've got to allow quarter of an inch that side quarter of an inch both sides to join which makes the half an inch difference to make your corners this is what you should have and obviously you've made a box with your fabric and um, and then we need to drop that in first of all what I did at the beginning was put my fingers in the corner and push into that corner and then push that corner in just have a look to see whether I thought it was going to be too loose um, and then we've, what we need to do then is turn this over to get to the top now I'm not going to crease that with the iron because I'm not 100% sure how much we've got to turn over, turn over so what I'm going to do is spray it in so, so make sure you get into all the corners so if you can see we need to push the fabric right into the corner as far as possible. So. And then spray the bottom. Try not to get too much at the sides, but we can do that after. Just the bottom bit I want to secure at the moment. Again, put your finger in the corner and push that into that corner and your finger into that corner and push that in I do the same on the other side it's coming up a bit wet so I might have lost I might have used a bit too much glue but I'm hoping that dries and then push that into that corner So from that side to that side, that side to that side, and try and flatten your fabric out, pushing your spare fabric to the sides. If you have any, you're not going to get it 100% flat. really well it's like this glue Just keep messing with it until you can get it tidy and you're flat and as flat as you can possibly get it and then my I assume then we I think what I might do then is wait for it to dry Dip it up out of the way. So it won't keep falling in on you. That's about right. That's 
stuff that you possibly can. Make sure it's secure. And in the corners as far as you can get it. But we are going to secure the corners with putting feet on. So I'm going to leave that to dry for half an hour. Well, I had to change the inside because that other fabric was marked by the glue. This one isn't. Uh, so I've had to find some more uh, fabric. Um, I folded, to, I'll have to, uh, you'll have to mess with it for quite some time. And then once you've got it turned over where you want it, keep pushing it into the corners. So you know it's going to be at the right level at the tops all the way around. Um, so I've actually, and I used obviously these. Uh, to hold it in while I was messing about with it and now I'm about to put pins in it for now uh, pull it for pull it down and then glue it and then press it back up put pins in because now at the bottom we are going to put uh, the feet uh, so what I'm going to do is mark one inch in this also will have the effect of holding the um, Of holding the fabric on the bottom in so just make a little mark about one inch on each corner from the corner there you go That's all, all marked one inch in, one inch in from all of the corners. Um, use a brad or something sharp. Again, I've got my little uh, screw on the end. I should be putting this in and pressing it, and then I should have to go on to the inside to make it go through the fabric because I want this to go all the way through. So keep the screw or the whatever you're using straight, put your finger either side of the fabric and then push and screw until yep. make sure your fabric is pushed into the corner. You're really going to come through the bit of fabric that you want to. So anyway, you keep messing with that. I think you're just about, I'm not sure if you can quite see that. I'll just move it about, you can actually see it in the corner. That's it. And then hopefully I'll be able to get from this side, you push it in. And then the other side, this is where you'll have to mess with trying to get it in. So I'll have to go off camera at the moment because it's a bit of a messy. Uh, find the hole in the fabric and push that over and then use one of those to go on. And I'll come back and show you once I've done it. So, as you can see from the bottom, my four feet are now in. Um, it took about two or three minutes each one just have to mess basically get the fabric in between your fingers and keep doing that from the box when you're pushing through at the back and as you put the fabric in between and keep going that until you make a hole and then it should be relatively easy to find it afterwards now that's going to keep the bottom of the fabric in the bottom it's never going to come up uh, it's also got spray glue on so the next thing now is to um, sew 
around the top and it's going to just be an overstitch so you need to buy a finder um, a suitable cotton that matches both well, that's all sewn in now um, I did an overstitch very small ones it only took about half an hour all the way all the way along uh, making sure that when I got to the um, handles that I caught it uh, both sides with all, with all fabric so that helps to support it at the top as well uh, they do want to lean slightly that way obviously with so let them lean which way they want they are supported down here as you know they're now supported here so they could take quite a bit of abuse um, yeah the bottom looks good um, the inside looks good I'm not worried about them showing because it's going to have uh, uh, things inside so and that's the next stage making the things to go inside so we've made a sheet which is basically I've just put two pieces of cotton together and pulled them through and sewed them just like you normally would and then just took them in I've used the white as a mattress at the bottom took those and I made a little blanket out of the, of the fleece I had so put that in, took it down and then this is the, the quilt cover that we made Just took that in now we need to make um, a pillowcase and a pillow to go with the sheet to match the sheet and, uh, and then we think we're done